Hello, it is Sunday, November 21st, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is Sunday today, which means we are solving a Sunday crossword, the biggest. The biggest crossword, the largest grid of the week. Look at this thing. It is enormous. We can see that certainly even behind the gauzy privacy veil, and we can see a series of circles. So uh, circled cells, some sort of theme going on, which is typical for a Sunday puzzle. And this one is entitled screen sharing. So that will relate presumably to this arrangement of circled cells. We'll have to figure out how. Um, I've just noticed actually the time. I think I'm seeing a movie in about an hour. So I'm going to have to maybe hurry through this a little bit. But quickly first, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. Um, the Saturday puzzle. We have first from Caleb Alberton, who says, I too thought there were three Hays in Steam's Na Na Hey Hey Kiss Him Goodbye, which I mainly know from its role as a crowd song at sporting events, but listening to the original recording, the second Hey just gets two accents. Hey, hey, hey. So there we go. I, I didn't remember that either. And then Caleb also adds, the pun I read in Night Owl works better for its counterpart, early bird. An early bird is someone who prefers to work or works or functions better early in the day. They are ones early to work. Conversely, a night owl likes to work late. They are ones late to work, ones to work late at night. The lateness is in the day, not the arrival to a job. Fair enough. And uh, Kathy Swope explains that the thundering herds of tawny prey animals in National Geographic films are usually common elans. That was the animal that I <laughs> repeatedly sort of remembered and then for some reason declined to enter into the grid out of lack of confidence. She adds, an elon is an, elon is an anim antelope of Southern Africa with large horns slightly swept back. The giant elon is the biggest antelope in the world. Yes, and I, I do remember what they look like. They are, they are very striking animals indeed. Chris Lavornia explains, you have to know American college sports in order for fighting tigers to make sense. That nickname is of LSU, Louisiana State University. Their longtime football rival is the University of Alabama, or as this puzzle indicates, colloquially known as Bama. Their nickname is the Crimson Tide and have trademarked the phrase and slogan, Roll Tide. Rahul Shah points out that I was close with the, the uh, initialism PDA, which I think I called personal display of affection. Uh, Rahul correctly points out that it is public displays of affection. It's the public bit drawing the eye rolls. I did, of course, know that. I I, um, I do remember misstating it, in fact. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, perhaps I was uh, had a, a momentary neural lapse, which clearly also happened during the moment to which Bice Dibley refers when he says, the number of times Chris reiterated that it's 2020, even when highlighting 2021 in the crossword title, is a very 2021 mood. And reusable box added, it made me question my own reality, not going to lie. I'm sorry about that. Clearly, clearly I'm not all here at the moment, but I think we can all relate to that a bit as of late. So let's move right on to the puzzle. You'll see I've spared you the ordinary, the typical additional preamble in the interest of haste. So let's get going. This was constructed, the Sunday puzzle, by Adam Wagner and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. I think I'm ready to get started, so let's go. I need all the time I can get. Let's extra light in, in a way. Um, in a way. So it's not necessarily a literal synonym or definition. Um, I don't know. Something about cracks a door ajar or something like that. I'm not really sure. Let's move on. Get on the stick. Get on the stick. Not sure. Music genre prefix could be neo or emo. Those both come up in any way. Oh, it could be alt, actually, and in any way could be at all. I will fill this puzzle in at all in any way. That didn't really work. Sleaze balls um, could be low lifes, perhaps, which I think is low lifes rather than low lives, I believe. Kind of muscle. I wonder if this is a tricep. That would be sort of funny. After all of that uh, investigation of the plural of triceps, which is indeed a singular despite the S, a pool tester. A pool tester. A Boy, it's hot. Why am I not seeing what that is? A tour, a sort of mountain? No. I don't know. Ah, Salma Hayek, 1996 and 2002. 
I don't know. Are these years in which she won awards, perhaps? Don't know, but they're italic it's italicized to this clue, which means it's almost certainly going to be related to the theme. So I wonder if these five letters could be an anagram of Oscar, perhaps? I have no idea. Uh, arm of the Department of Homeland Security. FEMA, maybe? The Federal Emergency something agency? Chess's Blank Caruana, one-time youngest grandmaster in U.S. history at 14 years, 11 months. Wow. Don't know, though. Flowerhorn, Cich Chichilids, and Vampire Tetras, for example. Some kind of plants, I would assume. Worker who wants to strike. And there's a question mark, so it's some sort of pun. So not necessarily a strike in the sense of industrial action, but maybe a strike, uh, you know, a smith, perhaps, would strike iron. Department of Homeland Security. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's look. Line through two poles. Line through two poles. And bop on the head. Yellow belly. Question mark. And pair in gossip. An item. So I don't think this is Smith. I was thinking of a blacksmith. Go on, shoot, could be ask me. Bop on the head, could be bonk. Worker who wants to strike. Oh, a miner. Strike gold, for instance, or some other precious metal or ore. Line through two, bowl, two poles. Skis, I suppose? I mean, skiing has two poles. I'm not sure I quite get it, so maybe this isn't correct. Oh, and this could be FEMA, indeed, the, the department. Um, ah, Dev Patel. Here's another one. 2008 and 2016. So another actor. So we does seem to be something with actors here. Um, Jerkwad could be an oaf or an ass or something like that. Barrels of fun could be a blast, maybe. And just sort of, what is, would that work with Jerkwad? Uh, you can bum. I don't know. Satirist blank Baron Cohen would be Sasha Baron Cohen. I don't think Blast is correct. Entree served with a knife. So in this case, this would be the American meaning of entree, which is a main dish as opposed to an appetizer as it would be in Europe. So served with a knife. A steak? I mean, I suppose in the sense that you often get an additional knife, you get a steak knife as well as the knife that's already at your table. So a jerkwad could indeed be an ass. Amount of tips earned by a street performer, maybe. One's take, one's... Not, but it says maybe, so it's not necessarily strictly the definition of this. Uh, Brad Pitt, another actor and a theme clue. I still don't really know what that's doing. A company of smoke could be ash. Textures, I think, could be IMO for In My Opinion. Goes to Hell could be rots. In other words, this garden is going to hell. This garden is rotting. I mean, that would be a pretty aggressive way to refer to a garden, but you could. Prefix with present could be omnipresent. Always around, around everywhere. Choose. Um, elect or opt or pick. Well, it goes to hell probably ends with an S. And here, have a taste, could be try this. What is this? You mean I'm wrong? And here we have brought on, could be hired, brought someone on into a position at a, a job. You mean I'm wrong. Is it? Nah, hmm. Clever blank are never punished. Clever, I don't know. Sinners are never punished. It doesn't work with the Y. Swoon, in brackets, swoon. Um, 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 um. Broadband initials could be DSL, which is a uh, certain type of internet line. Blank Khan of Khan Academy fame. Well, broadband initials, I suppose, could also be ISP for Internet Service Providers. What, Khan of Khan Academy. I mean, I've heard of Khan Academy. It's an online education site, but I uh, don't know that I've ever been there. 
Sal. Uh, if I were more confident about that, I might be more confident about DSL, but I'm not, so I'm not. What is this? Lichtenstein's currency. Oh, I don't... Lichtensteiner's currency, although I assume that's the same. Um, do they use a franc? A Lichtenstein franc, maybe? To badger someone could be to nag them if it's not the animal. Ah, and to choose could be to go for a particular option. So goes to hell could indeed be rots. Um, oh, are these fish? Oh, tetras, right. A tetra is a fish, not a plant. So exotic fish are the flower horn chichlids and vampire tetras, for example. That makes much more sense than plants. Line through two poles on axis. That was a much more straightforward meaning. So in other words, two poles of a sphere, for instance, a line between them would be its axis. And this looks like Fabiano Caruana, doesn't it? Um, oh, Dev Patel, Slum Dog Millionaire? I mean, that was a film in which he... Oh, I see. Very clever. So Dev Patel, 2008, 2016. Slum Dog Millionaire was his 2008 role being referenced. And Lion, which is spelled out in the circled cells, was his 2016 role. So we have actors with two films in which they starred, and the cells contain both films, one filling the, the cells as, as normal, and the other in the circled cells. Very clever. So Brad Pitt, 2001 and 1995. Was 1995 seven, perhaps? What would 2001 have been? Let's see. I don't know if that was when Seven came out, so I'm going to have to look around. Walgreens competitor. So, right. I think it probably is because this is a drugstore chain in the United States. CVS would be a competitor. What two is vis-a-vis -vis one is more, I suppose, straightforwardly. And, hmm, some sort of rumination. Here we have quail is to bevy as blank is to a parliament. So here we have um, collective nouns for birds. So you have a bevy of quails and a parliament of owls, in fact. A small, small valleys are dells, I believe. Yellow belly, oh, I see, L's. In other words, this is sort of a cryptic style clue a little bit, the belly of the word yellow. So the, the heart, the center, the middle of the word yellow is L's, the, the letter L, plural. So we phonetically spell them L's. Here we have, oh, a kind of muscle is not, in, is not triceps improperly as a singular tricep, but rather a tensor, which is a kind of muscle. So, Salma Hayek. So, dawn ends with dawn. I don't, uh, don't know. And then D A O Frida. She she played Frida Kahlo in the film Frida. So we can fill that in to the circled letters. So, but I don't know what the other one is. The other one would have been 1996. I'm not sure. Oh, From Dusk Till Dawn. There we go. From Dusk... No. It doesn't work, does it? Is it Till with two L's somehow? I guess so, because here we have olive oil. This could be olive oil with an I, the substance, but it could also be olive oil with a Y, the character from Popeye. I don't know, so I'm not going to fill it in yet. To get on the stick, I still don't know what that is, One's tush is a rear end. One's bottom. Thanks to could be owing to. So we're going to have to see if... So I suppose that is dusk till dawn. Why does it have two L's? Because until, U-N-T-I-L, only has a single L. Are there... I suppose there must be a spelling of the contracted version of until that adds an extra L. I, yes, must be. And actress Godot is gal Godot. And then not home is... Oh away with an A. So what is this? Tush. And then what is eight across? Get on the stick. Oh, pogo, a pogo stick. Yes. So, so to get on the stick is to pogo. I suppose pogo is a verb as well as part of the noun pogo stick. And we have a question mark, which is our pun indicator, letting us know that something a little bit cute is going on. So is a tush a patoot? A contraction of the already slangy term patootie? It must be. And then blank flux, one time science fiction series, and sister brand of Saucony and Stride Right. 
Um, I don't know. What remains with the could be the rest. The rest is what remains. Tahini is made from sesame steeds. Oh, Aeon Flux sounds familiar. So that would make Sister Brown of Saucony and Stride Right Keds. I think these are maybe all shoe brands. I think Keds is the only of only one of these I recognize, but I'm, they must all be shoe brands, I suppose. Ending with Brown, period, or Auburn, period. So this is, or full stop if you prefer, this would be a web address, brown.edu or auburn.edu. And a kind of force created by the moon would be tidal force. The moon creates our, our tidal um, uh, patterns. All right, let's extra light in, in a way. And deforestation, for example. And then here we have expert. Um, so expert, one would assume, I think, appropriately, that this is a noun. But I think in this case, it's actually an adjective. We're saying you have expert skills, you have deft skills, you are expert at this skill of solving crosswords. You are deft at solving crosswords, something I do not always feel about myself. Song title shared by hit singles for Ja Rule and Flo Rida. I don't know. I'm sure many of you do, and are E yelling at me about it. In the blank could be in the flow, which is what I hope to be in while solving crosswords deftly, but I don't know if that's correct, so we'll have to check the crosses. Deforestation. I don't know. I don't think flow is probably correct. Driven, say. I don't, yeah, I don't think so. High points could be acmes, the high point of a, an arc or something else. Oh, and deforestation, for example, could be ecocide. So it's, um, again, the for example, I think we had a say or for instance or something like that elsewhere in the crossword. In this case, for, for example, is saying these two things are not synonyms. If you said, ah, that's ecocide happening over there, you wouldn't say, well, oh, deforestation, those things are synonyms. There could be other, other forms of ecocide, but this is an example of the thing. So always look out for that. Um, song title shared by hit singles for, I mean, it could be I Cry. I mean, I, I have no idea if that's a song by these artists, but it would fit. Let's extra light in. Oh, dilates as into a, as into a pupil. Yes. So here's another case in which this is not a synonym or a definition directly, and we have in a way to let us know that this is saying let's extra light in in a way. When you dilate your pupil in a way, you're ex you're letting extra light in. Okay, and in the loop, not in the flow. And driven say again. We have another one of these say. Type A. So someone who is type A is often a driven person. They have a type A personality, a strong personality. But this is not a definition. These things are not synonyms of one another. You could say, ah, type A personality. Say you're, you're driven. All right. And indeed, I cry is the song title. So cyber squatters make fake ones as URLs when people register URLs in the hopes that someone will pay them for it because of the uh, ubiquity of the word or what have you. Equipment used to play the oldest organized sport in North America. Interesting. Could this be lacrosse? I think lacrosse might derive from an indigenous sport, perhaps, which would maybe explain why it was the oldest organized sport in North, North America. I wonder if that's what that is. I believe it might be. And, hmm, I see. Could be, I wonder. I wonder about cross, lacrosse. And... Maybe, Sal, maybe it is Salcon of Khan Academy, and then broadband initials would be DSL. Let's try it. Let's take a risk. A river in old song. The Swanee River is an old song. And when triple playful onomatopoeia for shooting laser beams. So onomatopoeia is verbal, well, not verbal, but vocal imitation of a nonverbal sound. So in this case, pew, 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 a way that people represent laser beams uh, playfully. Uh, with their mouth. Surfaces, surfaces, e.g. I think this might be PCs, the Microsoft Surface, which is a sort of a tablet computer. And here we have Owen Wilson in 2005 and 2006, so back-to-back -back years. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to need more crosses for this. You mean I'm wrong? Ah, it isn't. It isn't in the flow. It's in the loop. You mean I'm wrong? Clever blank are never punished. Clever... I'll be very curious to see what this is, this Voltaire quote. 
and start of many a limerick. Ah, the word there. There once was a man from Nantucket, for instance. There once was common beginning. Oh, cra this looks like Crashers, Wedding Crashers. I never saw that, but I know that was a film with Owen Wilson, or at least now I do, because I remember the name of it, and it fits in here, and it seems like the kind of film he would have been in, and then that makes the other one Cars. Oh, I didn't remember he was in Cars. Was he the main character, possibly? All right. Um, here we have Pickup Line, Need a Lift, perhaps? And Pickup Line has a question mark for the pun indicator, and that indicates again that we're not doing we're not reading this with the surface meaning, which we would take to mean a pickup line, meaning a way you would attempt to charm somebody in a bar, for instance. Instead, we're reading it differently. In this case, actually, more literally, you need to be picked up. You need a lift. Well, you're you're offering it. It's a pickup line. Need a lift? All right. Whom you might ask, where will I be in 10 years? Yourself. You might ask yourself that question. Let's see if that actually fits. Maybe it doesn't equal. Ah, no. I think you might usefully ask yourself that, but less usefully you might you might ask a seer, which I think is indeed the, the correct answer to this to this clue, but maybe not the correct answer in your actual life. All right, and then an equal would be a peer. Measures of acidity could be pHs, um, the scale that measures acidity and baseness of uh, substances. Joaquin Phoenix, 2014 and 2013. So uh, her, certainly a Joaquin Phoenix film. And then what would the other one have been? I don't know, but probably it will be a little more clear with some crosses. Here we have Van Gogh's La Blanque Etoile. I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Um, that is the, <laughs> that's the common pronunciation in the UK anyway. I know that the actual Legitimate pronunciation is something I'm not going to attempt. So, La Blanque Etoile. So, La Nuit, perhaps? The Starry Night? That is a Van, that is a Van Gogh painting. Um, and that sounds right in my, in my uh, modest French. Early online forum that popularized terms like FAQ and SPAM, frequently asked questions, FAQ and SPAM. Um, Usenet. I suppose you could call Usenet an early online forum. I think Usenet still exists, in fact, but it's not as widespread as it once was. News groups is what those were called. Clever blank are never punished. Clever... Oh, tyrants. It's clever tyrants are never punished. I see, indeed. It does seem to be the case, doesn't it? All right. If they're clever enough, anyway. Swoon, it's love. Ah, perhaps it is it's love, the swoon. Is it? What is this Joaquin Phoenix film? Seeing it. Maybe I'll delete its love for now. Supermodel, shake or shike, I don't know, unfortunately. Went up against, could be faced, as in a competition. Uh, sorority letter, could be theta, that's a Greek letter, so it could be in a, in a, um, a sorority, but let's check the crosses. Here we have mathematician Lovelace, Ada Lovelace, very early computer programmer, arguably the first computer programmer. And Sunrise Singer Jones, Nora Jones. And Supermodel could be Irina, that's a name, so that looks looks plausible. And Swoon, it's love. So what am I not seeing here? Irina could be with an I. Oh, Inherent Vice, of course, the Paul Thomas Anderson film. Uh, the With Joaquin Phoenix. All right, there we go. Which was... Also, a great Thomas Pynchon novel. I actually thought the novel was better than the film in this case, and I'm a huge fan of P.T. Anderson's films, but but that is a great novel. Okay, organization with a noted bell. Um, don't know. I'm sure that will be screamingly obvious when I see it, as many things are once you already know what they are. Massive adver adversary. Massive adversary. So I wonder which is the operative word here, the massive or the adversary. I don't know yet. Um, where can we go? I've been sort of jumping all over this puzzle, but but that's okay. I'm, I am trying to get through it quickly, so I'm trying to make good time through by whatever means necessary. I'm trying to do it. Uh, I'm trying to solve this puzzle at all in any way. All right. Where have we not seen? Oh, here. Catherine of Schitt's Creek. Catherine O'Hara, the great comedian. 
Outstanding finds. Outstanding finds. Gems, perhaps? And yes, golly G could be EGADs. And here we have gems. Stock ticker symbol for a longtime clothing brand. Perhaps Levi? Maybe Levi is the close the stock timber tick excuse me, stock ticker symbol for Levi jeans or, or whatever the company's full name is. Uh, oh, Brad Pitt, Ocean's Eleven. And I misspelled Sasha Baron Cohen, which should be a, a, a C. So Ocean's Eleven and Seven are the two Brad Pitt films, 2001 and 1995. Very good. Barrels of Fun, I see, could be a hoot, not blast. And that fits better because you could say this crossword is Barrels of Fun or this crossword is a hoot. It matches precisely, which is important in crossword cluing. If this were blast, you could say this crossword is barrels of fun, but you wouldn't identically say this crossword is blast. So a hoot here is actually a closer and more accurate match. And here we have an amount of tips earned by a street performer maybe is a hat full. And it's maybe because a street performer need not fill a hat with tips, but they might. Maybe they would. That happens. Price jockeying of competing airlines could be a fair war. They could compete on fair pricing. Not paying attention could be unaware. Often I feel, oh, no, not unaware. That would clash with wedding crashers, which I'm fairly certain is correct at this point. Unalert. Unalert. I'm often, I often feel that way solving crosswords. Okay. Um, utilize a company policy for new parents, say. Could be to take leave. You could take parental leave. And corrects in text could be amends, um, as subtly distinct from amends with an A. Amends, amen, amends. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that properly without over enunciating it in an annoying way. The lowest numero primo, I suppose, would be dos in Spanish. I suppose this doesn't count one as a prime number. I'm not really sure Matt, what is the highest mathematical ruling on that, whether one is considered a prime number, because a prime number is a number that is divisible by only itself and one, which you could say one is as well. I don't know. Perhaps a mathematician viewer will fill me in. We'll, we'll see. A massive adversary. Um, why am I not seeing this? I don't know. Noted fashion monogram could be YSL for Yves Saint Laurent, the Yves Saint Laurent, I suppose, the great designer, and a massive adversary is a I'm I'm sure I'm missing something extraordinarily obvious here. I apologize. A golem, a Oh, Goliath, of course. A Goliath. I'm sorry. <laughs> very sorry about that. That took me ages of staring at something very obvious here. A massive adversary is Goliath, as in David and Goliath. Goliath being the massive and David being the opposite. Okay. Some dolls sold in a university studio's gift shop. Um, I don't know. E.T.'s, perhaps? Was E.T. a Universal Studios film? Maybe. Organization with a noted bell. NASA? Does NASA have a bell? I don't know. Um, probably not. Shortest answer from a magic eight ball. Yes. So I suppose, does a magic eight ball not have no? It must not because the shortest answer has three letters and no has more than that. That's interesting. Before in poetry, here's an old crossword standby, air, poetic way of saying before. And here we have meatloaf's Rocky Horror Roll. Ugh. I actually haven't seen Rocky Horror in probably 15 years or more. Is there a character named Eddie? That would fit. So perhaps that is that. It's at the beginning of this clue. It's at the beginning of this clue. Could it be a, a short I? Very clever. It's as a it, it being the short, uh, phonetically short I, as opposed to I, which I suppose would be a long I. And here we have forensic prose in brief. Well, it must end with an S. And in brief indicates that it is an abbreviation or contraction or initialism of some kind. Um, but I don't know right offhand. Words of eventual understanding could be ahas. And now we have two S's, which might not be right. So perhaps not. Ah, 
So words of eventual understanding. Now, there are two ways you can interpret words. You can interpret it as meaning two words, which actually I think is the case here, but it could also mean a single word, plural, because that word, well, because we're saying it's um, these, how do I phrase this? If this were ahas, aha is the word of eventual, eventual understanding, but we're making it plural with words of eventual understanding. That's a bit, it's a bit less precise because you wouldn't say aha, aha, aha necessarily, but it is technically accurate. But in this case, it isn't the answer. I believe the answer is ah, okay, or oh, okay, one of those two, it could be either, because problems with phonograph records are skips. And walking sticks with a question mark, so walking sticks with a pun. So one or both of these words is meant to be read in a different way to what we would assume, a walking stick as a cane. We're not reading it that way. But let's look around a bit. So we know that this is ah, okay, or oh, okay. So does that help with baseless rumors? Oh, I don't think we've seen baseless rumors yet. Um, canards. A canard is, is, uh, is something spurious. And forensic prose in brief CSIs, crime scene investigators, perhaps. And a focus of some smartphone updates would be iOS, Apple's operating Apple's I operating system, the international or internet operating system, or the, the me operating system, it may mean, perhaps. Frayed not could be no siree Bob. And this contraction of afraid, this apostrophe frayed not, is helpful because it lets us know that we're dealing with speech in dialect or, or colloquial speech. And so that helps us arrive at no siree Bob which is itself a very informal and colloquial version of saying, I'm afraid not, or in this case, afraid not. So, okay. Uh, put on again, re-air, for instance, as in a program. And here's a classic stumbling block. I really struggled with this a few days ago. The word put, obviously, can equally be present tense or past tense, and so you need to allow for either. Um, so watch out for that. And in fact, I don't think it's re-air. <laughs> but because packed house initials, this comes up in the crossword occasionally, and I wouldn't blame anyone for it. I wouldn't, wouldn't in any way fault someone for not knowing this fairly, I think, uh, rarely seen acronym SRO for standing room only. Um, packed house, meaning there are no seats left. If you buy a general admission ticket, there will be standing room only. And the reason I think that's less common now is because we live in an era in which so many more tickets are bought online ahead of time rather than at the box office. And so there's less call for this sort of thing, although it does still happen, of course. In any case, put on again is probably still re-something. So instead of re-air, it could be actually equally rerun or re-ran. It could be either one because of that immutable nature of put. So a modern joust venue informally. Modern joust venue? What does that mean? So jousting is a knight's duel, a, horse, a duel on horseback. What would a modern version of that be? I don't quite understand. I'll be curious to see the answer. Uh, here we have went after, and here's that bell. Uh, contents of college blue books. So an essay, that's a um, an essay test common uh, booklet. Uh, they're blue. They're literally blue. So they're referred to as blue books. And then here we have, oh, organization with a noted bell, I see. It's the New York Stock Exchange, which rings a bell, I believe, to signify opening hours of the on the trading floor. Something that itself, as with SRO, is becoming somewhat less relevant over time as more and more trading is done entirely online. And not only that, but more and more of it institutionally is done uh, in an automated fashion by algorithms rather than individual traders. All right, went after, could be how oh, set on maybe. Let's look around a little bit more. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, 1974 and 1995, twice. So the 1995, would that be heat? Although I don't see how that, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> this, is, this is a very clever little twist on the theme. I think this is heat, Heat. It's two instances of 
the Michael Mann film Heat, featuring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, because we're dealing with both actors. And Heat was, I believe, the first film in which Robert De Niro and Al Pacino co-starred, but also actually encountered one another, whereas the other film, The Godfather, oops, let's type that, part two, featured both Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, but because they were in different timelines in that film, they did not overlap. All right. So, member of a Turkic group, this would be an eth- this is sort of ethnic group. Um, but I don't, I'm not seeing it immediately. And then here, one time streaming platform of the 2010s. I don't know. And here we have walking sticks again, right? Walking sticks. Oh, peg legs. I see. Yes. So wooden sticks on which one might walk if one has a peg leg. And takes from could be robs, as in thieves. Bug eyed could be agog. You're visibly shocked. Blank. So dash elect. Ah, right. So to be. So this dash elect indicates that this is a suffix. So something like president elect or chairperson elect, something like that. And similarly, you would append a hyphenated to be, president to be, chairperson to be, uh, to the position to create the same effect as adding elect, or at least a similar effect. Obviously not necessarily identical because something to be doesn't have to be the result of an election, whereas someone elect obviously does. Okay. Ah, Tatar. There we go. That's 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 a, a member of a Turkic ethnic group, the Tatars. Yes. And one-time streaming platform of the 2010s. I don't know what this is. H go. Oh, HBO go, I suppose. And here we have a uh, two-part clue. Brother of 99 down. It must be Abel, the brother of Cain, which must be 99 down. Cain. Cain and Abel from Genesis in the Bible. And then when Alexander Hamilton is sung in Hamilton. So that is the first song of Hamilton, I believe, so it would be sung in Act 1. And ah, expensive Super Bowl purchase. I think this will disambiguate this rerun or reran here. Add add time or add slot. Add slot as an individual purchase seems more plausible as opposed to add time, which is a collective noun. And then yes, indeed, here we have TV's Blank Lasso, Ted Lasso, which came up in the crossword just the other day as well. Oh, I see. A modern joust venue informally, a ren fair. So a joust recreation as opposed to a legitimate joust. That, that, that was why I didn't quite land on that. And a high value deposit. You can have a deposit of ore in a mine, for instance. Here we have took a bow, but I wonder if it could be took a bow because we have a question mark indicating a pun or wordplay. So something could be well, it could also maybe acted. If you took if you took a bow, is that because you acted in a play in a production. Um, saw a production of A Christmas Carol last night with Stephen Mangan, who you might have seen in various um, British television, I guess, most notably. Took a bow at the end, of course. Ramirez of Grey's Anatomy. I don't know. Modern tech feature for watching two programs on one screen or an alternative title for this puzzle. Ah, so here is our revealer. We've finally seen it, and it's in its most traditional place. So the revealer is what I used to call the explanatory theme clue. This is the clue that ties our theme together. So we've, at this point, we've we've long since identified the rule of this theme. The rule being that we must take the two years given to us in the clue and find films released in those years starring the actor also named in the clue. And one of those must be entered into the full fill, and one must be entered only into the circled cells. So how does that help us? And and this, I suppose, will be in some way referenced by this clue, but I don't know quite what it is. Modern tech feature for watching two programs on one screen. Oh, I see. I see what it is. An ad slot is incorrect. It is, in fact, ad spot. So I had quite a few relatively minor, but still uh, small but significant poor assumptions when it comes to little bits of fill that could really have thrown me off significantly. So I have to be careful about that. 
Anyway, this must be picture in picture. And of course, that is a perfect description of this theme. We have one picture, Frida, in another picture from Dusk Till Dawn. Similarly, Lion and Slope Dog Millionaire, and so on. Very clever. Okay, this, will, this would also be a very good, this would be a, a good uh, theme for an answer in the uh, UK quiz show Only Connect, which ties things together in in clever and unintuitive ways that make a great deal of sense when you see them, but can be sort of hard to identify until that point. All right, went after could be set at, took a bow, ah, I see, arced, took a bow, arced. Does that work here with Ramirez of Grey's Anatomy? It, I hope so, Sarah Ramirez, I hope that's correct. It sounds plausible. That smells terrible, could be ug. Regret could be rue, so this is regret as a verb, not a noun. I, I rue the day, I regret the day. A shore sorer could be a gull, as in a seagull. Name on a toy truck. Um, Hess, I think, is Hess maybe an oil brand? An oil, or maybe a defunct oil company whose name, for whatever reason, maybe because they manufactured toys as marketing for their brand. I don't know, that sounds familiar. And submissions to a casting director could be reels, as in demo reel and acting reel. Uh, historic trade ally, 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 I'm sorry, of the Monoc Monocan, Monocan people. Um, e the Erie, I would assume. And does that work with the rest of the fill? Yes. Shower times would be April, as in April showers, bring May flowers. And does that work here? Timorous. Um, trepid, as in trepidatious. Timorous, sort of nervous, shaking. Does that work? Absolutely devoured, uh, inhaled, as in food. Places for rubs and scrubs. Don't quite know. Here we have like wool sweaters often are itchy, often they are itchy. Teensy bits, iotas, not one iota of, uh, of itchiness in this shirt that I'm wearing. What a strange sentence that was. Thick component of orange juice could be pulp. I absolutely despised pulp as a child. I wanted not one iota of it. I found it itchy in my throat, but as an adult, I absolutely love pulp and orange juice. Go figure. And in fact, now I find pulpless orange juice to be sort of weird and thin. Don't like it. Dark yellow shade. Um, oh, topaz, perhaps? I don't know that I'm familiar with topaz used as a color, to be honest. Familiar with it as the, the gemstone, but um, could that be the case? And here we have snoring symbols in Surrey. So um, often in the crossword, a location will serve as an indicator to a particular dialect. So here this says snoring symbols in Surrey. Surrey is a county in England, and therefore we're looking for the English or British more generally way to refer to snoring symbols, which are in American English Zs or in British English Zs. And ah, places for rubs and scrubs, I see, are day spas. So is this going to complete the puzzle? It is. Right. All right. And I did that in. I mean, of course, it is my longest solve of the week. Uh, still, I would consider for a video solve with commentary, not bad for a Sunday puzzle. So I will have time to make my movie, looks like. And indeed, that means I have time to berate you with some of the, the um, postscript that I skipped in the preamble. But let's quickly review the puzzle first, because this was a very nice theme, I think. We had our nested, our pictures and pictures from Dusk Till Dawn, which contained Frida, Salma Hayek's films, respectively, from 1996 and 2002, Dev Patel's 2008 and 2016 films, Slumdog Millionaire and Lion. And let's see, are they consistent with the order? I th uh, So Salma Hayek, 1996 would be from Dusk Till Dawn. So the first answer is the containing answer, the outer answer. Is that a clue, is the containing answer. Is that true here? Yes. And similarly, Brad Pitt, 2001, that would be Ocean's Eleven, and 1995 would be Seven, so that holds. So that is, in fact, the pattern, which I don't think I made a point to investigate during the puzzle. It, it, um, here we have Owen Wilson, 2005 and 2006, Wedding Crashers and Cars. 
Joaquin Phoenix in 2014 and 2013, Inherent Vice and Her, and Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, 1974 and 1995 twice, we have The Godfather Part Two and Heat and Heat. I really, I very much enjoy that the last one of these, after we had fully internalized the um, method, the mechanic of the theme, the very last one was slightly subverted, not in a, not in a way that caused huge amounts of problems, but I was definitely a little bit confused because I, I certainly knew this was going to be the film Heat, but I thought that's too many letters for Heat. And it wasn't very long until we figured out what exactly was going on. And they, Adam Wagner generously provided us with an additional clue by pointing out that this happens twice. To reflect the historic meeting of these two actors face to face in the same film. So that I thought was very nice. And this little picture in picture revealer is quite clever. So it, it, uh, and by that, I mean, it's a, it's a pithy way to sum up what's going on. I mean, I, I took several sentences to sum up what's going on, but it's cleverly boiled down to this simple common phrase. So well done. I liked it. I enjoyed this puzzle. And it's really what I, what I want and sort of need in a Sunday in the sense that I didn't run into big, consistent pockets of resistance. I mean, I find that there's almost no way to make a Sunday puzzle solve as breezily as an ordinary sized grid might, because it's, it's simply too big. So given that, I do appreciate when I don't get uh, firmly stuck on a Sunday puzzle for a while, because that can really drag. And I didn't think that happened here. Obviously, especially on these video solves, I'm always going to drag it out a bit because I'm I'm speaking through each answer. And so I guess I guess given that, I'm even more appreciative when I don't reach a hard wall, when I don't have to um, painstakingly burrow through a tunnel in order to complete the puzzle. And I didn't think that happened here. I thought this was a nice balanced grid. Uh, so well done, Adam Wagner. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe. Please do subscribe to the channel. You'll see these videos much more easily if you do, and you won't miss any. You can choose to miss some if you'd like, but if you subscribe, you will always be able to see them as they go live each morning. And if you know someone who might like it, please do pass it along, either directly, one-to-one, -one, if you know someone who you think would particularly enjoy this, or generally to your online dwelling, whatever it may be. Maybe if you still use Usenet, you could post about this on alt.rec.com crosswords or something. I bet that exists, or at least something similar to it. Um, and if you particularly appreciate this series and you would like to yourself contribute to its ongoing uh, sustainability, then that means quite a great deal to me. And if you do, you will instantly gain access to months of bonus videos, including weekly mini puzzle speed solves, monthly New York Times bonus puzzles. Boy, I really have to get the the November puzzle out. This has been an incredibly complicated and busy month for me, so that's that's why that one's not quite out yet. But the this month I do have all of the um, Boss Words Fall Themeless Puzzle League competition crosswords. I do have all of the weekly mini puzzle speed solves out, so those, those are all caught up and up to date, and I will get that bonus monthly solve out as soon as I can. I would have done it after this puzzle, but I do have to run run to that movie. I'm seeing Throne of Blood, the uh, Kurosawa uh, film, actually. There's some uh, throughout the UK, maybe this is worldwide as well, I'm not sure, but there's a a Kurosawa kind of retrospective where his films are being screened in theaters, which is quite fun and a rare opportunity. Anyway, that's not related, not relevant to anything, is it? But um, yes, in addition to all those bonus solves, you can also get extra access, an extra channel in the uh, daily solve discord chat server which beyond that beyond that special exclusive channel for patreon subscribers is free to everybody to join and you can chat with others about this series about the new york times crossword other crosswords other puzzles and crossword construction it's a nice little community you should join it there's a link to all these things in the description field underneath the video and finally for particularly generous patreon subscribers you can receive an exclusive mug with a Let's Check the Crosses slogan, as well as recognition at the end of these videos. And in fact, right now, I am going to recognize Patrick Carthy 
as well as the inestimable Hood Monster and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia for their generous support. Thank you for your recurring contribution, making this series something that I pursue every day as part of my daily work. I very much appreciate it. And so, yes, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Hood Monster. And thank you, Shantanu, for your generosity. And thanks to everybody else who's backed the Patreon. And not only that, thanks to you for watching this video. You've made it all the way to the end of a Sunday video. These are typically the longest videos of the week. And indeed, I believe that's true about this one, where I think we're around 50 minutes now. So thanks for sticking through it. And I hope you will come back tomorrow for the contrasting, likely shortest video of the week, or certainly one of the shortest of the week, and one of the easiest puzzles of the week. Um, if you're new to the crossword, start on a Monday. Start solving on a Monday. Those are the those are the easiest ones. You'll probably still find them difficult if you're new to the crossword, and there's no shame in that. I certainly did when I started solving the New York Times crossword. But if you want to give it a shot, that's the day to start. They are the easiest, and I will be back, of course, to solve it with you, or before you, or after you, however, you, however you'd like to arrange it, and I hope you will join me. So until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Bye.